Hey everyone, Dr. Yu here. Welcome back to another teacher review lesson. Today we're we'll continue on the genetics aspect, but we're going to look at genetics at the individual level, at the organism level. In particular, we're going to look at how traits are inherited from parents to the offspring following cells' loss of heredity. These are the objectives from the official study menu, and we're going to cover all these kind of points. For example, you need to know the differences between a dominant and a recessive trait. That's usually pretty easy to understand. I don't usually have students struggle on that. It's pretty straightforward. You also need to be able to explain how gene pairs are inherited from parents, which I will describe in a second. You also need to know the differences between inheritable and non-inheritable traits, which we will touch on. And the most important thing is you need to know how to draw a Punnett square and use the Punnett square to predict traits of offspring based on the information for the parents. For example, you will be given the genotypes or phenotypes of the parents and use that information and the Punnett square you should be able to predict the traits and the percentage in offspring. All right, now let's uh, do a quick uh, overview on Mandel's study. Now you can find this information on Mandel and his study uh, very readily from the internet or from just any biology textbooks. Uh, basically, Mandel was a monk who had a lot of free time to study biology, and he was really passionate about that. So he spent he spent years observing peas to um, study the patterns of inheritance because he noticed that individual pea plants um, had a different trait. For example, you know some of the seeds are round and smooth, some of the seeds are wrinkled, and some of the seeds are yellow, but the others are green. So he was trying to figure out what kind of determines you know what the pea plants would be like, right? Why they had um, certain traits but not others. So he spent years studying that and eventually he discovered the patterns of inheritance and he's really kind of considered the father of genetics. So here are the three laws from Mandel's study. And I don't really think you need to memorize, you know, word by word what the law is about. For example, what is the law of dominance? You need to understand how each one works and you should be able to apply that information right, to uh, a question. That's, I think, what T's expect you to do. You need to be able to ap apply that knowledge right, to solve problems. So first, let's uh, cover a couple of terms. You need to know these terms before you can get on Mandel's law of uh, heredity. First term, allele. So alleles are different forms of a gene. So think of alleles as um, names of a person, right? So the person has an official name, but the person may also have a nickname, right? So both names refer to the same person, but they are different. So alleles are the same thing. They're just different forms of a gene. For example, for the gene that's called for the texture of the seed, so that's the gene that regulates the texture of the seeds. There might be two different alleles, right? One allele, one form of the gene will code for smooth seeds and the other allele codes for wrinkled seeds. We have different blood types. Some people are type A, some, a, some people are type B, some people are type AB, right? So these blood types are, are determined by what kind of alleles you have. If you have allele A and allele B at the same time, then you are going to have type AB blood. If you have two B allele, then you are going to have blood type B, right? So you can see for blood type, you have three different alleles, right? A, B, and then the allele with the lowercase i. So those different forms of a gene are alleles. Next, homozygous and heterozygous. So if an individual has the same alleles for a particular gene, then that individual is homozygous. Uh, right here, 
this is the same chromosome. So let me just call it chromosome, let's say number three. Okay. And remember in the last lesson, we mentioned that for each type of chromosome, you are going to have two copies, right? Because you inherit one copy from parent one and another copy from parent two. So you should have two chromosomes, two copies of chromosomes for each type of chromosome. In this case, you have a two copies of chromosome for chromosome number three. All right. Now, usually the genes are located on the chromosomes, right? Because chromosomes contain DNA. And the scientists are able to locate the locus, which basically means the location of a particular gene on the chromosome. For example, the gene that codes for the height of the plant is located here, right? So you can see locus, again, it just means location of a particular gene on the chromosome. Now, if this individual has two same allele for the height gene, then this individual is homozygous, right? Homo means the same. So if you have two same alleles, you're homozygous. If you have two different alleles for a particular gene, then you are heterozygous, right? For example, for the gene that codes for the texture of the seeds, this individual has a allele that codes for wrinkled seeds and a allele that codes for smooth seeds, right? So those are two different alleles. So this individual, in terms of the, the texture gene, this individual is heterozygous. Okay, so when we talk about homozygous or heterozygous, usually we refer to a particular gene. Okay? For this particular gene, you know, this individual is homozygous or heterozygous. Now move on to genotype and phenotype. Genotype is really about an organism's genetic makeup. Okay? Uh, usually this refers to, you know, what exactly alleles do you have? For example, here, this individual has a big T, little t, some of you may already know that an uppercase letter indicates a dominant allele and a lowercase letter indicates a recessive allele. So for this individual, you need to use the letters to indicate what exactly alleles this individual has, this organism has. Right? So genotype is the genetic makeup indicated by the letters right, to show the different alleles. And you cannot see a person's genotype, right? Because you're not uh, Superman, you're not X-Men, you don't have the ability to look through um, the cells, right? To look at, you know, what kind of gene this uh, organism has. So genotype is not something that you can observe, you can see. But a phenotype is observable. A phenotype is what individual looks like, what the, in, the organism appears. Phenotype is can usually be seen or measured uh, in life. For example, you can you know, tell whether a plant is a tall plant or a short plant, right? That's something that you can actually see or measure. Another example is color of the eye, right? You can see pretty easily whether a person has brown eyes or uh, blue eyes. All right, now let's look at dominant versus recessive alleles. So we mentioned that dominant alleles are usually written in capital letters, right? For example, the, the uh, capital G for green pot. So the green pot, the, the color green is a dominant trait. Dominant trait. On the other hand, yellow pots, the yellow color is a recessive trait. The recessive alleles are normally written in lowercase letters. There you go. So dominant trait, is expressed and the trait is going to show in the organism and it's observable. That's because the recessive allele, oh, it's going to be masked by the dominant allele. So that's why the recessive allele is not going to be expressed. So it, the corresponding trait is not going to show in the organism. A simple example, the organism has big G, little g. I just like to call big G, little g, that's just an easy way to say it. If an organism is big G, little g, that's a heterozygous, right? Heterozygous, because this organism has two different alleles. 
Now, uh, if the individual has a big G or big G, little G or little G, then the individual would be homozygous. Okay. All right. Now, coming back to big G, little G, what's the seed color for this particular pea plant? Yellow or green? It's going to be green, right? Because in this instance, individual with a dominant allele is going to express that dominant trait, which is green. Okay, now let's uh, look at how to do a Punnett square. So a Punnett square is actually a not, uh, not too difficult. Once you know how to do it, then you know, it becomes really easy and you can do one probably in, you know, as fast as just a few seconds. So this Punnett square we're gonna look at applies to mono hybrid. Do you know what hybrid means? Um, but mono refers to one, right? So we are really just looking at one trait. So it could be the color of the pot or it could be the height of the plant. Right? Now, when we do pond square, we don't necessarily have to have heterozygous parents, right? Peas could give you questions with homozygous parents. That's very possible. But usually uh, the heterozygous parents are the most kind of complicated one. And also Tease likes to use the heterozygous parents in the question because it's a little bit more complicated than the other examples. So we're gonna start with a heterozygous parents. We're gonna do the Pony square for a monohybrid cross, and then we'll move on to instances where one or both parents are homozygous. Let's say we have two plants and we're gonna cross the two plants uh, you know, pollinate them and to collect offspring. We know that the two parents are big A, little a, big A, little a. So they're both heterozygous. And for simplicity, we're just going to follow the color scheme in this diagram. So we're just going to say that big A is yellow color for the pot and little a is the green color for the pot. So big, big A is dominant okay? and little a is recessive. I don't have room, so I only wrote down the letters. The parent genotype is big A, little a, right? So when you look at chromosomes, one of the parents, because they're the same, right? So I'm just gonna use one parent as an example. So this parent is going to have, you know, two copies of chromosomes. So these two are chromosomes. And let's say the gene is located about here on the chromosome. So the parents, both of them, are going to have a big A allele on one of the chromosomes and a little a allele on the other chromosome. Now we haven't talked about meiosis, but just remember this, when this parent okay, is making gametes, we didn't talk about gametes, right? Gametes are basically sex cells. So it could be sperm or eggs. Okay. Now, when uh, an individual makes gametes, um, the two copies of the chromosomes will end up in two different cells. Okay. So basically, each gamete, each sex cell, is going to inherit only one of the two chromosomes. So one gamete is going to have this, this chromosome that contains the big A allele. And the other gamete is going to have the other chromosome which contains the little a allele. All right, and then, you know, one of these gametes is going to get involved in fertilization, right? And then the allele, one of the two alleles will be passed on to the offspring. Okay, so that's the general process. And you can probably guess that when one of these, you know, gametes is uh, randomly selected for fertilization, you know, maybe, you know, these two are sperm cells and one of the two sperm cells is just lucky enough, right, to get through the journey and find an egg and fertilize the egg. So everything's very random. So you can imagine that each gamete or each of the allele will have equal chance, right? Which is a 50% chance to end up 
in the offspring, right? Big A allele has 50% chance of being in the offspring. And the little A also has the same chance, right? Which is 50% chance ending up in the offspring. Okay. So uh, part one is going to either donate big A, right? If this type of uh, gamete it ends up in fertilization, or the parent could donate little a, right? If this type of gamete ends up in fertilization. So there are two options there. It could be big A, it could be little a. For the other parent, since this parent has the same genotype, it's going to be the same, right? Uh, parent number two is going to donate either a big A or little a to the offspring. And everything is equal chance. So we are just going to figure out all the combinations that could happen in offspring. If a parent number one donates big A and the parent number two also happens to donate big A, then the offspring is going to have, put those two together, big A, big A genotype, right? If parent number one donates little a and the parent number two donates big A, then put them together, the offspring is going to be big A, little a, right? A heterozygous genotype. And you can do the third one on your own. So that's going to be big A, little a, right? And then the last one, that's when both parents donate little a allele. So the offspring is going to be little a, little a. So that's how you do the Punnett square. Basically list all the possible alleles that could come from each parent, right? And then draw the Punnett square. So again, in this case, parent one could donate big A or little a, same thing for parent uh, number two, right? Big A, little a, and then draw the Punnett square, figure out all the four combinations. And basically that's Punnett square. When you look at the squares, there are four squares in total, right? So overall, the chance that the offspring will inherit all four genotypes is 100%, right? All four squares together, that's 100%. So each square is going to have 25% chance that will show in the offspring. Each square will have 25% chance by being in the offspring. So this means the offspring have a 25% 25 chance of having big A, big A genotype. And let's do the others. So this is going to be 25, 25, but these two genotypes are the same, right? So you add the two numbers together for big A, little a, the chance is 50%. So the offspring could have a 50% chance of having big A, little a, right? That's twice as much as big A, big A. Now the last one, 25%, so the offspring have a 25% chance of being little a, little a. Okay. So now let me get some space and then we'll list everything. Now we're looking at genotype. Okay. So big A, big A, there's only one, right? One square. And the big A, little a, it has two squares. And little a, little a has a one square. And then when you convert that to percentage, one square is going to be 25%, two squares, that's 50%, and one square, 25. Right. So again, like I said, if you're looking at the chances that um, an offspring could inherit a particular genotype, you're going to use the percentage. For little a, little a, the offspring have a 25% chance of having little a, little a. But if you are looking at the ratio between the three possible genotypes, the ratio is going to be 1 to 2 to 1. Right? So that's the genotype ratio. Now, again, I want to point out we're looking at genotype, right? Because some of you probably saw this three to one ratio and they can say, that's not right. This should be three to one. But keep in mind here, one to two to one is genotypic ratio. And over here, that's phenotypic ratio, right? So now let's look at phenotypic ratio. So we're switching to phenotype. Right, what the plants look like. 
So here, that's a yellow seed, right? You can see it's indicated by the color. So yellow, this also yellow, because yellow is the dominant trait for heterozygous. So the dominant allele, the big A, is going to mask the little a, right? So the seeds are going to be yellow, going to be the dominant trait. So this one is also yellow. And the last one, two recessive allele, and that's when the recessive trait could, that's when the recessive trait can show, right? Only when you are homozygous recessive. Homozygous recessive. That's when you have two recessive alleles, right? And then no dominant allele to mess things up. So uh, the offspring will be recessive. So that's going to be green seeds, right? So now you can see yellow seeds. That's three squares. Right? One, two, three. And green seeds, that's only one square, right? So the ratio is going to be three to one, three to one. But if you're looking at the percentage, that's going to be 75% to 20, 20 and 25%, right? Because of one square, that's 25%, three squares, that's 75%. All right, now let's look at when one parent is homozygous and the other one is heterozygous and what genotypic and the phenotypic ratios are. So again, big A is the dominant allele and C for dominant and that's a yellow seed. And little a is the recessive allele and it's going to be green seed. All right, now what if I have two parents who are big A, little a, that's the, that's parent number one who is heterozygous, right? Now I'm gonna cross this plant with a recessive plant, which is little a, little a. Do the panel square and kind of predict the ratios of genotype and phenotype in the offspring. So you can pause the video here and do your own panel square, get your answer. Make sure you go through it. Um, if you struggle a little bit, you know, make notes on which step you get stuck uh, and then kind of compare to my answers. If you have finished it, you can resume the video. So parent number one is going to donate either a big A allele or a little a allele to the offspring. So there are two options there, two possibilities. The second parent is going to donate either the first little a allele or the second allele, the second A allele. And then you do the partner square, write out all the possible combinations. And we usually do put capital letter first, capital letter and then lowercase letter. Okay, so let's look at genotype first. So how many possible genotypes we got? Let's see. That's number one. That's that's the first genotype, right? So we have big A little a, and the second possible genotype is little a, little a, right? That's all the possible genotypes. And you can um, count, so there are two squares here, so that's going to be 50%, right? And for little a, little a, that's also two squares, and that's 50%. Right? Now, the ratio, when you write out the ratio is two to two, but in science, we don't usually do two to two. We will convert that to one to one. Okay, so basically the offspring have 50% chance of being big A little a or 50% chance of being little a little a. Okay, so that's the genotypic ratios. Now let's look at phenotypic ratio. And remember, most of times T's will probably ask you about phenotypic ratios, uh, ask you about the phenotype. So that's something you have to get it right. The big A little a, that's going to be yellow, right? Yellow seeds. Little a, little a, that's going to be recessive, which is a green seed, right? So you can see now yellow seeds to green seeds is two squares to two squares. And again, we're gonna convert that to one to one. And each one has 50% chance of being in the upstream. Okay, so you can see for this particular cross, 
right? One parent being homozygous, the other parent being homozygous recessive. The phenotypic ratio is going to be one to one, right? 50% uh, being yellow, 50% being green. I'm going to go up a notch and, and add something else to, to the question for you to answer. I have seen this type of question on T's, so make sure you understand how this works. What if I give you another number? So let's say we cross these two plants and we collected a total of a thousand seeds and we plant these seeds and we get a thousand plants. Okay. Now my question is, how many of these plants are going to have yellow seeds? How many of them are going to have yellow seeds? And how many of them are going to have green seeds? Oh, green. What would be your answer? The ratio is going to be one to one, right? So if you have a thousand plants in total, then half of them are going to be yellow seeds, right? Half of them are going to be green seeds because each one is, you know, 50%. So a thousand times 50% is 500 and the other one is the same, right? 500. And if you're good with math, you know, with the ratio, you can figure out it's half, half, right? So five, 500 of them are going to have yellow seeds and 500 uh, are going to have green seeds. But how about I go back to this particular type of cross where both parents are heterozygous. Now it follows the three to one ratio, right? So if you have a thousand plants in total, then you know the, the three to one ratio is also the same as 70%, 75% yellow and 25% green, right? So 70% of a thousand is going to be 750, right? 750 of the 1,000 plants are going to have yellow seeds. So yellow seeds. And 25% times 1,000 is going to be 250, right? Basically, the rest of the 250 plants will have green seeds. So that's you know possible problem that you could see on teas. Um, they give you the total number of the, the population. And you're going to use the ratio numbers or percentage numbers you get from the Pound Square and then you know multiply that percentage by the total number of the population and then figure out how many individuals in that population have a particular trait.